Good morning. Oh, good morning, All Saints in Saugatuck. It's a real pleasure to welcome everybody back into the sanctuary soon, I hope. This morning, again, we'll be welcoming everybody back virtually via this online service, but I'm so pleased that we can be here at least online for this Eucharistic liturgy in which we'll be celebrating spiritual communion. I'm here with Judah as well, the wonderful Australian Shepherd Dog who keeps everybody herded, uh, and rightfully so. But for now, uh, Noreen is playing the prelude, and I want to welcome everybody back with the bell. So good morning, all saints. Come on, Judah. Good morning. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to join in singing the opening hymn of praise. The text, the lyrics for the hymn are in your liturgy leaflet or on your screen.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, who hast given thy only Son to be unto us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life, give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive that his inestimable benefit and also daily endeavor ourselves to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right. For soon my salvation will come and my deliverance revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants. All who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcast of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. Please join me in saying together the psalm appointed for this morning. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so now they may now be disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. The disciples approached and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my fa Heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into the pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and then goes out into the sewer? 
but what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart comes evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands do not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sedan. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a devil. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Good morning, saints of Sagatuck. Good morning, Sagatuck Douglas Fenville saints. Good morning, Lakeshore saints of Southwest Michigan. <laughs> So, just how far can we extend that circle of greeting and welcome? It's actually one of the truly vexing questions that nearly every one of the world's religious traditions has asked of itself repeatedly for many centuries. That question certainly pestered both ancient Israel and the history of the Christian Church. Exactly how far can our faithful welcome extend? What we heard from the Bible this morning suggests an answer to that question. God's welcome extends farther than most of us can imagine and includes more than most of us find comfortable. More particularly, these biblical texts suggest rather strongly that God's grace and divine blessings do not belong to a zero-sum game. Now, honestly, I didn't understand very well what a zero-sum game entails when I first heard the concept many years ago. So a friend of mine very kindly explained it with reference to a blueberry pie. If you have a piece of the pie, there's one less piece of that pie left for me. Or these days, I suppose we could make reference to the early stages of the coronavirus shutdown and that really strange run on toilet paper, you may recall. If I buy more toilet paper than I need, there's far less of it for anyone else. <laughs> That's the very essence of a zero-sum game. One person's gain is equivalent to another person's loss because there's only so much of a given commodity to go around. So if I, have, if I have 10 marbles and I give five of them to you, that means I have five fewer myself. Your gain is my loss. But here's the thing. God's 
grace and divine blessings do not work that way. And this is simultaneously good news and deeply disorienting for many of us who have been so profoundly shaped by the economic system in which we have been steeped our whole lives, a system that depends on convincing us that there isn't enough for everyone. Each of the biblical writers we heard from this morning offers instead a vision of God's disorienting abundance. So I'll say just a bit about each of those texts and then why I think this matters so much for a world in pain. First, concerning the prophet Isaiah, let's recall that ancient Israel often struggled with how to interpret their status as God's own chosen people. Earlier texts in the Hebrew Bible presented divine election as sufficient reason to conquer other nations. After all, to be a chosen nation means necessarily that others are not chosen. But Isaiah has a decidedly different understanding of the purpose of being chosen. To be chosen and beloved by God does not mean conquering other nations, but to be a blessing to other nations. God actually says this directly to Abraham. I will bless you, God says, so that you will be a blessing to the whole world, to all the families of earth, God says. Isaiah returns to this theme repeatedly and in multiple ways. We heard hints of it this morning. The foreigners, he says. The foreigners, the strange ones, the aliens, the ones who speak a different language, live a different way of life, have different customs, come from faraway places, any of these foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful. My house, says God, my house should be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Apostle Paul is struggling with something similar in what we heard from his letter to the Romans this morning. Indeed, this entire letter is an extended cautionary note <laughs> to Gentile Christians not to disparage or denigrate Israel. Just because God's grace has now, through Christ, reached beyond Israel and into Gentile nations, does this mean, Paul asks, that God has rejected his people? By no means, he declares. There is enough. <laughs> there is more than enough of God's grace for both Jews and Gentiles. Notice that Paul refuses to play a religious zero-sum game. In such a game, when God accepts one people, God must necessarily reject another. Paul refuses and even denounces that kind of commodification of divine grace. There is no scarcity in God. There is enough, more than enough, of God's grace for all. This view of God's grace is so important and so difficult for many of us to grasp that the gospel writers portray even Jesus as struggling 
with it. The story we heard this morning from Matthew's account of the gospel is quite troubling in that regard. Jesus is rather rude to a foreign woman, a Canaanite, basically referring to her as less than human, as a dog. Now, <laughs> let me be quick to note that I do not consider being associated with dogs as an insult, but that's a topic for a different sermon. <laughs> Some context for this story from Matthew's account of the gospel would be helpful here. So I'm grateful to Bible scholar Ched Myers for his really succinct summary of that context. Jesus and his Jewish disciples are traveling through Gentile territory in this story. The cities of Tyre and Sidon were coastal cities that were historic centers of the Phoenician naval empire a long-standing adversary of Israel. So this is not friendly territory. And this Canaanite woman is herself being terribly rude by approaching Jesus in the way that she did. For ancient Mediterranean societies, it would have been inconceivable for a strange woman to approach a man in this way, let alone to make a demand of him as she did. I'm guessing, however, that the mothers among us would not find this inconceivable at all. This Canaanite woman's daughter was ill, tormented, Matthew says, by a demon. There is no length to which a mother will not go when her child is in trouble. Let's remember that when we see images of Syrian refugees crowding into tiny boats to escape a war-torn country, or migrant farmers leaving their Central American homeland devastated by drought, to seek a better place for their children to live. I don't think it's just coincidental that Matthew frames this story about Jesus encountering a stranger, a foreigner, as a story about healing It's not only this woman's daughter who needs healing, in other words, but also the relationship between Canaanites and Jews, between the ancient Phoenicians and the ancient Israelites, between women and men. Both the humanity of this woman and the humanity of Jesus stand wounded in this story, scarred by long-standing cultural rivalries and ethnic animosities. And perhaps this is the key to understanding why Jesus is so rude in his interaction with this woman. Actually, what strikes us as rude would have been perfectly normal and expected behavior in that first century context between people of rival cultures. So perhaps Matthew is suggesting that even what seems reasonable and natural about our social interactions with each other needs to be brought into the healing light of the gospel. And in this story, it's a foreign woman's persistence that shines with gospel light. Even dogs receive crumbs from their master's table, she says to Jesus. 
reminding him, <laughs> reminding him <laughs> that there is enough, more than enough grace for everyone. If ever there was a moment in American society when we needed this reminder of God's disorienting abundance, surely now is that moment when our divisions and fragmentations are so painfully visible, when the wounds we have inflicted on each other for so long have been brought into the light of day in a new way. I can't help but wonder whether our economic system of scarcity and the zero-sum game we have been taught to play that blames foreigners and strangers and all those who don't look or speak like us for taking away what little we think we have, whether all of this keeps us wounded and scarred whether all of us stand in need of healing in this country. If that's true at all, then offering our worship and praise to God truly does make a difference. In my experience, praising God creates its own kind of healing abundance, a generosity, a generosity of heart, a depth of compassion, a posture of extravagant welcome. Let the peoples praise you, O God. We recited that from the psalmist this morning, let all the peoples praise you. There is more of God's grace than the world can ever need, and there are more divine blessings than all the people and nations that have ever been or will be. And so the psalmist repeats the refrain, let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Entering into God's praise can change how we live, how we interact with others, and how we relate to the world around us. So, together, let's make All Saints Church a place that is clearly known for its abundance. A place that overflows with grace and generosity. A place where old wounds are healed. And a loving community of divine praise. May it be so. I invite you to join in an affirmation of faith by offering the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again 
in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church in the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto, unto the divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all of those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of the holy word and live in unity in godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Wayne, our bishop, the standing committee of this diocese, and the clergy and lay readers of this parish, that they may both their lives and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacrament. And in all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially in the, to this congregation of all saints and salutes, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive the holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Don, the President of the United States, and Gretchen, the Governor of this state, that they may be led us, lead us to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all of thy works that rejoicing in the whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy body, the bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee, O thy grace of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity especially those remember. And at this time, you may pray for those individually. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to grant they, us grace so that so to follow the good, thy good example of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed, 
against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and nation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, say, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. A very hearty good morning and welcome to everyone who is joining us here this morning at All Saints Episcopal Church in Saugatuck, Michigan, via this online service. We are taking uh, as many precautions as seems right at this time during this coronavirus pandemic. We aren't meeting together here in person in the sanctuary, though we are celebrating a Eucharistic liturgy as a way to engage in what is called spiritual communion. You will see in your liturgy leaflet that after consecrating the bread and wine, Deacon Francis and I will kneel uh, for a few moments of silence, and then we will offer together the prayer of spiritual communion as a way to be together in this Eucharistic moment and to seek God's blessing as the body of Christ. We are uh, working uh, uh, as members of the vestry and clergy to think about ways that we might have a Eucharistic liturgy outside in September on the lawn here in the church, in front of the church. Please stay tuned for that as we are working out the logistics for that um, and how we can do that uh, in appropriately distanced and safe ways. This morning, we're very grateful for the flowers at the altar that have been given by Mary Remick in appreciation for the work that is done here by Leslie Remick, our parish administrator, and Rebecca Hopeman, who is our parish sexton. I'm also super grateful for both of them and for their work. This week, uh, on Wednesday, we're going to start an experiment with uh, trying to continue being online together in prayer by offering evening prayer here on Wednesday evening here in the sanctuary. I will be the only one present <laughs> here in the sanctuary, but it will be streamed, I hope, live through a Zoom link. And uh, you can find that Zoom link uh, in our regular e-news that's sent out via email. And hopefully this will be one among several ways that we add to our Sunday morning prayer pattern so that we can be together a bit more online, even in prayer. So uh, we'll do that at 5.30 this coming Wednesday. Please know as well that um, we are having a biannual meeting this year. I know that this is uh, a new pattern for All Saints Parish. Uh, the purpose of this biannual meeting, we have the usual one in January and we're having another in the summer, although this time it's in September, September 20th. 
Um, at that meeting, we will be electing new vestry members who will begin their term of service in January, following the annual meeting that takes place then. You will be receiving more information about how that annual, that biannual meeting in September on the 20th will take place. Do look for an announcement about that. Please know that feedback is welcome and solicited about how we are doing this Sunday morning worship and other aspects of our life here at the parish. Um, I am very eager and I'm also grateful, by the way, for those of you who have been giving feedback. Please know that it is most welcome and that we are doing all that we can to improve and enhance our time together online as a community of prayer and worship uh, during this very unusual time, as we look forward, of course, to being together once again in this sanctuary. Please know as well uh, that we are very grateful for your financial contributions, those of you are staying up with your pledges. We know that this is a difficult time during this uh, coronavirus pandemic. For many people, financially, it's a difficult time. So we're very grateful for those of you who are able and are staying uh, up to date on your pledges of financial support. This church is not closed. Even though we can't meet together physically here in the sanctuary, we are very much open. We are praying, we're worshiping, we're serving those in need. We are about the business of being the body of Christ together here in Saugatuck and the wider Lakeshore region. Your gifts of financial support are so appreciated. You will see a link on the screen uh, to make those pledges and uh, donations of financial support. Um, thank you so much for doing that. And now, um, please do join in singing an offertory hymn. You'll find the text for this hymn in your liturgy leaflet and on the screen as Deacon Francis sets the table. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is right to me. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. 
who by water and the Holy Spirit has made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth thy glory in all the world. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of thy glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make. Having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. We earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto the Lord ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant Amen. us Amen. thy peace. I invite you to join us in offering a prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. I invite you to join in singing our closing hymn of praise. The text, the lyrics for this hymn are in your leaflets or on your screen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.